Hello everyone, this is Tony from Two Copper Pieces. I'm the one without the beard, and this is episode three of Stormbringer. As you can see, there are four bases that come with this one, which tells me there are four minis. Um, great, not bad. I mean, last one came with 10, but oh, oh wait, there's a fifth one. So there's actually five minis. These are uh, some things. What are these? These are Stormcast Vindicators, which sounds very try-hard to me, I must say. I, I don't really know much about them. You can see one of them on the cover. I don't know if that's the main one or if that's not one of the main ones. I don't know. They all look very similar. They have shields. I've got another kind of issue with it in that on the cover, that very dramatic looking picture, he's, got, he's clearly got a round shield and some sort of hammer and not a single one of them has a hammer. The same issue as the Cruel Boys as before, but you know, whatever. In this episode, you'll get some lore. You'll see what you're collecting. You'll build something and learn how to play. Um, I will read some of the lore to you or tell you about some of the lore as we go through. Um, you'll learn about unit traits as you see there. You'll get a table where you can figure out Stormcast names and you can name your minis if, uh, you know, you're a bit sad. Like, I'm not going to name my minis. Why would you name them? All right, you also see where to clip, how to line up the parts, push them together, and then know that once you've done that, they are finished parts. Um, I'll be using my standard method of clipping the bits and putting them on top of the diagrams so then I know where everything is and putting them back together. You'll see a lot of that. Uh, I've described it a lot, or as much as I'm prepared to, in the previous couple of videos. So let me tell you a bit more about the lore here as you watch me build this thing. I might chip in and comment on it as I go along. So, you find out in this issue about the realm of beasts. Something about the ground quaking and the skies filling with animal shrieks. Um, and then you hear, the, or you hear the wind and you smell blood on it or something like that. And apparently this is Gur, the realm of beasts. Oh, so Gur is a place. In this mortal realm, all creatures and plants, and even the land masses themselves, are deadly predators. Only the very strongest survive the eternal hunt of Gur. The rest are devoured. So not a great vacation location, I must say. Gur, the realm of beasts, is a land forged from savage magic, as opposed to the civilized magic, I guess. Everything that lives in Gur is driven by predatory instincts from the colossal birds that inhabit the icy peaks to the ferocious creatures that roam the bone-strewn savannas. Mmm, this is sounding more appealing by the second. Humans live in walled cities built into the skeletons, built into the skeletons of ancient monsters. I mean, that sounds quite cool. Um, outside, massive beasts hunt each other in a never-ending struggle for survival. Even the landscape itself is shaped by violence. Mountains grind across the plains to destroy the lesser mountains. Really? Wow. Mountains go and attack other mountains. Um, I'm just going to pause on that lore for a minute. I just want to show you that I'm not actually using any of the helmets. Um, I thought the faces just looked much more interesting, interesting and expressive, so that's where I'm going with there. Alright, Land of Monsters. Gur. Why is it telling me about Gur? when I'm painting Stormcast Vindicators. There doesn't seem to be a, much of a connection there. Maybe maybe they live in Gur. I don't know. It doesn't seem to be telling me very much about the actual models in this issue. It seems like that would make a bit more sense. In any case, Land of Monsters. The biggest monsters in the mortal realms can be found in Gur. These creatures grow more dangerous all the time as they feed on a rich diet of magic and the flesh of lesser beasts. Hmm, good for them. Realmstone of Gur. The beast magic of Gur solidifies into animal bones made of amber. Wizards use these bones to turn themselves into beasts. Okay, so they're druids and they do it by using the bones of the beasts. Good for them. Uh, war in the realm of beasts. Warriors battle constantly in Gur, either to tame the land or to claim rich territory from their enemies. Fighters in this realm find themselves filled with bestial rage and fight more fiercely than ever. So the barbarians. As battle rages, wild beasts often arrive in search of prey. Even the ground itself shakes in response to the wars raging across it, rumbling and turning defended positions into rubble in moments. That sounds rather chaotic and nonsensical. Oh well. Monsters of Gur. Hmm, here's a bit of an interesting accent for you. 
My old da always said to me that there was nothing to fear from the mortal realms and that the scariest thing you'll encounter in the wild is another human. Of course, he was raised in his ear most of his life, where the only thing more hoity-toity than the people is the dragons. He looked at the stone horn the wrong way on the first day in Skyheld, Gur's coldest, cruelest city, and that was a lesson I'll never forget. My mother always said to me that I could do anything I wanted as long as I wasn't as stupid as da. I spent my life stopping others from getting swallowed, savaged or poisoned by the beast that dwell in the realm of beasts and I've made this guy to help you survive out in the realm. Heed my words carefully, the wilds are full of dangers and one mistake could cost you your life or even your city. Uh, oh, there's something about more crushers. These seem to be giant. More crushers are capable of flight despite their massive bulk. Mm. Wow, like dragons, I guess. This has long baffled the scholars of Azir. Warriors who have fought these creatures suggest gravity is simply too afraid to mess with a maw crusher. You've also got carnosaurs, which seem like a big dinosaur, and often they will have a rider, often a lizard man. Carnosaurs feast on the flesh of their enemies. When a carnosaur tastes blood, it goes into a killing frenzy. Even a tame beast that has been blooded is incredibly dangerous to be around for friend and foe alike. Wow, I'm really looking forward to visiting Gur. I'm sure you all are as well. All right, Stormcast Vindicators. Ah, so we're gonna learn about them finally. The ultimate defensive troops, armored in Stormforge Sigmarite. Yeah, that sounds real. And wielding weapons that crackle with lightning, they will hold the line and destroy any who draw close. So they can't be beaten by the sound of it. Use the table below and on the next page to give your unit vindicators a name and a story. Uh, no. No. You can give them a trait as well. Something like Soulbound or Shield Wall. Stormcast names like Andras or Avran or Sigra. Great names, great names, guys. Uh, okay, so it doesn't really tell you anything about Stormcast warriors. Of course, later you do find out how you can fight with these warriors. Uh, you'll see an, a section towards the back of the book which shows how different, different areas work with bigger numbers of creatures and what they can do in the gut rippers face off against the stormcast vindicators um, could be fun uh, I might record a session of that a bit later um, but yeah just to bring it back to what's going on here you'll see I'm adding random little bits of stone that have been put in look at that bit of stone on that tiny little hexagon that I had to fiddle around with to get in Look how much more realistic this is going to look now that that bit of stone is on there. Absolutely worth it. Right, uh, here they are all finished, um, all stuck all stuck together. Still no paints, but they are coming. Paints are coming. I've already got issue four, five, and six, and I can tell you paints are coming and some other disappointing things. Um, so look out for those. Some quite frustrating deliveries, I must say, in issue five and six in particular. But Jess, look out for the next episode. It will be coming soon. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, share, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.